In today's video, we're going to be installing the Apexi Neo in the J35A4 Supercharged Honda Pilot, and I'm going to be giving you guys a pinout so you guys can do it to yours. Let's go ahead and get started. What's going on everyone? Welcome to Texas Honda Channel. If you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. We're going to get started with the uh, Pexi Neo install, so here we go. Okay, before we get started, make sure your negative battery post cable is disconnected, so that way we don't have any shorting or issues. Also, yes, I know this is dirty. I have plans to clean it. <laughs> I know you were dying to say that. Right? Yes, I know I was. Every, every time I see it. But we're going to go ahead and get started on the passenger side. Um, in this glove box area here, and you're going to want to remove this uh, plastic cover to get access to the computer. I just done clips like that. If you look back in here, that's where the computer is located. You're going to have this metal piece right here. I already took one of the uh, 10 mils out, but it's 10 millimeter nuts right here. And then this piece will come out. So after you remove that metal plate, you'll see there's another 10 millimeter nut. And then you'll just go ahead and remove this connector out of the way that's connected to this metal plate. So once you remove this 10 millimeter nut, we'll go to the driver's side. Okay, on the driver's side, you're gonna remove the plastic cover here as well. Then you will have access to the computer. There's a 10 millimeter bolt. You'll remove that and disconnect all the connector plugs. We'll go from there. We have the computer right here, which is a PVF A51. A51 is a common sign that it's an automatic computer, just in case you were wondering. A52 as well. Um, but I wanted to show you with this out because it's just going to be easier. We've got connectors A, B, C, D. And then if you flip this over, we've got connector E back here. Since there are no pinouts, I'm going to be creating one for you guys um, so you guys can understand. So this is just going to be a quick rundown. A1 would be that connector pin right there. A2 would be the connector pin right next to it. A3 and so on all the way across. So it'll be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's A6. Um, if you got the basic grasp of that, I will definitely make sure to put a pinout picture that I have to custom make. Um, showing wire colors because like I said, there's nothing out there showing anything on the pilot So I hope you guys appreciate this because it's gonna take quite a while for me to actually make this pin out um, but We are going to basically use the pin out and I'm going to show you exactly which wires on the harness I used for the Apexi Neo Okay, we have the Apexi Neo right here and the wiring is all connected together it does have this quick release right here so you can feed it to where you want and then connect them back together so we got the wiring up in here and as you can see here I used connectors female and male um, if you ever revert back to factory it's as simple as just plugging these back into their spots so that way it's pretty much plug and play at this point um, so yeah we're gonna start with the colors and the connectors so let's get started Okay, we have connector A right here, and we're going to basically count to 19. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And that wire is that blue wire right here that runs to the green, to the Apexi Neo. Basically just going to splice into it, no cutting it. You can actually just peel some of it back and splice into it, but uh, I went ahead and cut it and used solder, heat shrink, and electrical tape to make sure that the connection's solid. All right, we're moving over to the B connector. Looks like this one. We're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is this yellow and black wire right here. That is gonna be the positive. I used heat shrink and solder, um, and these Two red wires, the red and white and the normal red one, will tie into that one. That's a yellow positive, so when you turn the key on, the Apexi will come on. And then we're going to move one wire over, which is a ground right here, right next to the yellow wire. And that's where we have the brown and black wires. Those come from the Apexi. They're just spliced into that ground and heat shrink and soldered. Pretty simple on that as well.
Okay, so on this B connector right next to the black wire, we're going to go over two wires. It'll be one and then two, which is this green and yellow wire. The green and yellow, will I have a male and female right here. That way they can quick disconnect and we can go back to factory. Um, but we've got the purple wire right here. The purple wire for B12 goes from the epexy into the computer. And then up here, we have it cut. This one is a pink wire, male and female connected as well. And this wire goes into the epexy. So this pink wire will run into the epexy from this green and yellow wire up here. And then the purple wire will be coming out of the epexy, connecting into the computer. And what this one does is that is actually the VTEC. Okay, we're moving on to connector C, which is this blue one here. Um, at least for the 2003 to 2005 Honda Pilot, this is not drive-by wire, so I don't know if that makes a difference. Um, like I said, there's no pinouts out there, so hopefully this one helps you guys. Now on this one, we have C17 will be a green and red. That is your map sensor. And on the Neo side, it will be a white right here. So I cut it up top at the very top of the harness. Obviously, I followed the wire to... C17 counted all the way across until I got to 17 and it's a green and red wire. So the yellow from the Neo will connect to the ECU side and the um, from the harness side that will connect to the white one on the Neo. And that will basically be your map sensor input. So the map sensor is telling this signal here going into the Neo and the output from the Neo to the ECU is a modified signal. So that way it's actually telling something different to the computer. So that is C17. Okay, now we're gonna find C27, which is a red and black wire, which is right here. And we're just splicing into that one and putting the gray wire, uh, heat shrink and solder, all that good stuff, electrical tape. And so that one right there is just a splice in. Gray wire right here is actually the throttle signal. So this is basically telling the Apexi Neo your throttle position. So far we've done the yellow and white, the gray. And then over here we have the purple and pink for VTEC, brown and black for ground, red and red white for power. So that's all of the colors that we need on the Honda Pilot. Um, there are other colors on the actual harness. That's for different sensors for like um, a Toyota Supra has a different sensor set up for the map and stuff like that. So those will be the extra wires that we don't need. Um, and one of these wires is for the VTM, but I could not find the VTM in the ECU. So I'm not exactly sure where that goes. Um, haven't had any issues with it. The VTM light doesn't come on or anything. So I just left that one disconnected. because there was nothing on the pinouts that I found that said anything for VTM, even though this does have VTM on it. So yeah, now we're basically just going to make sure all those are nice and connected. And uh, I will have a pinout for this and just a basic pinout in the description. If you guys need it, share it around. I hope it helps a lot of people because there was nothing out there for the J35. Uh, it also should work similar on the Odyssey, but don't hold me to that. Uh, I don't know exactly if it will be the same, but uh, it definitely works on this 2003 Honda Pilot. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the computer back in and verify everything works. Okay, got the computer back in, and that's how it looks. Made sure to zip tie the wiring up out of the way. Ran it up here through this area, which I'm going to have it running behind the shifter, not in front. Um, so now we're going to hook the epexy up to that part. I've already put some uh, Velcro strips on this side and up here, so that way the epexy can actually just Velcro to it. It can be out of the way or it can be up there. Either one works. The back has Velcro as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug it in. We'll see what we got. All right. Now we just basically connect this piece here, that piece there. And before you try to even start it, we have to do some settings on the Apexi. Um, as soon as you turn the key forward, definitely check for smoke or any issues because that will be a common sign if you did the wiring wrong. You want to make sure to not go any farther yet. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make sure there's no smoke and issues.
well, no smoke or issues. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and set this up. Um, you're gonna wanna do this before starting your vehicle. We're gonna go all the way out here to etc. We're gonna go to initialize, click this button at the bottom right, which is the okay button. Go to yes, initialize okay, yes, we're gonna click okay. So it's basically gonna wipe with whatever's on the Neo completely back to nothing. So now that we've done that, we're going to go to etc. again. Mode select VTEC control on since we have VTEC on here. VTEC model change, map data initialize. Okay. Mode select, I'm going to go to Pro. Easy is pretty much the exact same thing. You just get more adjustments with Pro. Hit OK. Car select, we got a six cylinder, and then we're going to do the throttle. So right now the throttle isn't being pushed. We're gonna hit okay, because it's closed. Now we're gonna fully floor it and you'll watch the voltage go up, ready? Then you'll hit okay. And let off, that's all set. Sensor select, we're not a hot wire, we're a pressure sensor. Click pressure. I'm not quite sure on this, but I think it's like if you have more than like a couple PSI coming in, you can set like I don't know, 5 PSI? I don't know how this works exactly. So I've just kept it at 1 to 1, but this might actually help if I had it at 5, and then the computer will only see 1. So 5 PSI is going in, 1 PSI out. I'm not exactly sure on that, so I just set it 1 to 1. But I'm going to experiment with that for sure. And then we'll go back. Analog scale. We're going to turn the rev all the way up to like 10K RPM, because it gives you more adjustment. Um, and I had mine at, I think I had mine at 15%, and I didn't do anything with KPA. Uh, warning set, you can have pressure warning, rev warning, and throttle warning. You got display, so we got the color, the keypad. I'm just going to go ahead and put it back to what we had it at, which was like a cayenne. That's what my wife liked, so it was more like of a tealish color, tealish blue. And brightness, since I didn't hook up the orange wire, I forgot about the orange wire. The orange wire will uh, let this dim with the key. I always have it at 100% brightness because I like to be able to see it. And I don't know about the other stuff. So we'll go back, we'll go to settings, air map. And this is your high throttle. This is when you're fully floored. You go from 500 RPM all the way up. So on this particular setup, since I'm on the stock injectors, so this is how I had mine set up prior to initializing it, was 50% fuel because I'm on those 240cc injectors. So I did that on the full throttle only um, just to max out my fuel to get the richest air fuel ratio I possibly could. Um, but since I need bigger injectors, I'm going to have to lower that down once I decap these injectors or get bigger ones. Um, then after that happens, we'll have to come in here and we'll have to subtract a bunch of fuel, which... That's fine, it's not too hard to do. It's pretty self-explanatory, it's pretty easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and set all these to 50, and then we'll uh, come back and do low throttle. Okay, now we got all those to 50, we're gonna go low throttle side. This is basically where your half or partial throttle is. I wanna show you that real quick. We'll go to throttle point right here. We just, we were in air map, and I hit the back button, and down to throttle point. And right now, it's set for 10%, so anything over 10% throttle, it'll be in your high throttle side, or it'll interpol interpolate between the two. So I like to have mine at about 50% throttle, and my low throttle, um, since I drove it around and I know, it's at about 30% um, for normal street driving, not getting on it or anything, just I have hills that I have to climb, so I have to give it a little more throttle. So it'll interpolate between the two of those and find the best map, won't, won't make it too rich or anything. I don't know why it says no control on that, um, but the VTEC Unmatch, I added 50% fuel. Like I said, these injectors are maxed out. And this worked really well, um, how I had this, but this is for my particular setup. Um, this will change once I change the fuel. Um, but basically on this, our lower RPM stuff, I just added one and then moved up to two and then to three. This can all be changed while you're driving. It's a lot easier to do when you have two people and you're out driving around. Um, so basically I just did it like this and it worked great. My air fuels were beautiful and uh, 
I had no issues whatsoever. And I am never hitting this high of RPM at light throttle anyways. But just in case I ever did, I just want to have a little extra fuel there. But that is basically it for that. Now you can choose different RPM views, like throttle position. Here's your throttle position. And then we've got RPM, throttle, and battery. And VTEC monitor. Then you can go to analog. And I was on this, wait. And I was on this one right here. So that's the one I have it on. So basically, now that I got all those settings uh, taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. And there's the voltage. That will go up to about 14, 14.2. 14 and then, basically, just gonna check, say, Make sure we got throttle position. Well, that's working good. There's the voltage, 14. Everything's working how it's supposed to. So next thing we're gonna do is uh, just take it out for a drive, measure the air fuel ratios. Um, everything's basically maxed out as far as I can get it for right now. So we'll see how it does. All right, it's driving great. I'll do a couple little pool videos for you guys. Uh, it's only on about 1.5 PSI uh, because we're maxed out on the injectors and the air fuel ratios. Um, so Jeremy's over here with the uh, scan tool, basically checking everything out, verifying that the um, Apexi is reading right, and so far so good. Voltage, throttle, all of it, it seems to be pretty accurate. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple little pool videos for you. All right, I'm gonna do a little pull, see how it does. Fuel ratios definitely look pretty decent um, considering this thing's at one and a half psi one to one and a half psi air fuels cruising are great fuel economy of this thing has improved so much um, but yeah we definitely got to get those air fuels a little richer so we might decap these injectors and that should give us the flow we need that way we don't have to replace them with aftermarket since the apexi isn't like an aem or a honda or a k tuner we can't mess with dead times so that's a problem um, but we could put Acura RDX 410cc injectors in here and some track timing and it would be great. But uh, yeah, once we get back to the house, we'll go over some stuff. All right, back at the house, we are going over some of the data in his uh, scan tool. Coolant temps, 183, not bad for a supercharged setup. Mm -hmm. uh, you wanna look at intake temps. 117 for air intake temp, and that is seeing directly under the supercharger. So those temps are pretty accurate. That's what the intake manifold is seeing. So not bad for a supercharged setup, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get out and show you some stuff. So yeah, it's running fantastic. Uh, supercharger is actually not very hot at all. It's, it's just a light warmth. That's crazy. Most superchargers, and he can verify, what could, you, what could you do on that supercharger? You could cook an egg on that old supercharger. Yeah, you could cook an egg on the D-Series supercharger I had, the Jackson <laughs> Racing. That thing gets hot. This one, not so much. Mm -hmm. And they make an after cooler. It bolts right below the supercharger and the adapter plate. Um, and that is basically an intercooler setup for these. They make them at ZZP Performance, you know, ZZP's uh, website for the Pontiac Grand Prix GTP. You look up parts for that. They make all kinds of stuff for these. Um, but yeah, everything's holding up good. I want to make sure to get this as detailed as I can and let you guys know what's going on. I'm trying to get this all fine-tuned so you guys don't have to go through the headache and it really hasn't been much of a headache at all. So it's really great. Um, I assumed it would be hard since there's a lot of people out there 
uh, that haven't done this. Like this is the first pilot that's done. Now this J35A4 is in the Odyssey and people have done it to the Odyssey. But there's no videos, no how-tos, no this is what they had to do. So I'm trying to pave the way for everyone else that wants to do this. Also, prank part adapters. Um, I was in contact with them. They're out right now um, because I bought the last one. But they're trying to get as much made as they can. So if you guys are interested in the prank parts adapter plate, um, they are going to be a minute to get. But definitely go to their website and uh, check on it. I don't know. It may have updated since I make this video. So... Stay tuned to the next video where I do the EGR valve trick where it tricks the computer into thinking the EGR is always good so you'll never get a check engine light. If you get the check engine light, it kicks VTM on, which makes it front wheel drive. Which brings me to my next thing. We will be disconnecting the drive shaft to the rear all wheel drive system. Um, I'll be marking it on both sides so we can put it back in the same way it came out. But that way we can get this on a front wheel drive dyno. And when it is front wheel drive, this thing roasts these tires. When the VTM light came on and it made it basically front wheel drive only, where it put all the power up front, I was roasting these big old tires off, which is crazy. Um, and that was only on one PSI. So I could only imagine five. And this thing will be up at five. We're working on it. I know it's not super fast right now. So I'm going to get those comments that it's slow. It is slow. Uh, it's 4,500 pounds without the roof rack without the big tires without the brush guard and all the other stuff so uh, it's pretty impressive for a 4500 pound you know soccer dad <laughs> suv that's what i call it it's not a soccer mom vehicle but boogies. it definitely does you can verify it boogies. It boogies. also i want to give a huge shout out to tim he's a subscriber uh he actually when we met up today we we're just hanging out and went to O'Reilly's to price some parts and he paid for the two motor mounts that this was lacking. So now this thing has all five brand new engine mounts. Um, so it has the torque mounts, the front, rear, all of everything. Now, thank you, Tim. You didn't have to do that. I was going to get it. Um, so huge shout out to you, man. Appreciate it. Here is actually how bad the front motor mount was this whole time that I needed. As you can see, that thing's completely destroyed. It is done for and it's been like that for a long time. Also, here's the transmission. Uh, it's fully separated completely, and now it's fixed and good to go. So this thing definitely is putting more of that torque directly to the wheels. But, uh, yeah, I hope this video is detailed enough for you guys. Uh, definitely share it in some groups, the uh, Odyssey groups, the uh, uh, Pilot groups, and the Ridgelines. They all have the same engine, so I don't know. Maybe that pinout will work for them. Um, but uh, all the information will be in the description that you guys need to know. So... I'm going to go ahead and get off here. I'll see you guys in the next video. Definitely stay tuned. As I like to say, God bless. Stay safe. Stay awesome.